Were you stunned when you saw this leak yesterday? Yeah, I was flabbergasted. Uh, it really is unprecedented with all the, you know, our institutions have become increasingly politicized, but I never imagined this could happen to the Supreme Court, yeah. which has always protected its confidentiality. And for someone to, to let this out in order to influence the final decision is, is really uh, beyond the pale. Do you think that's the motivation? Yeah, I think I think it is. E you know, either we had a situation where there were five votes for that position and they're trying to intimidate someone to back off the opinion, because, as you say, things were in flux until the time it's issued. Um, or they were trying to determine whether they could muster five votes and, and they're trying to. Mm -hmm. That's how I read this. Situation. The report by Politico suggests that the conservatives have a majority uh, and that Roberts, Chief Justice Roberts, may not be in it. He may, he doesn't sound like right now, or at least at the time that they did the report, I mean, last night, he was a dissenter, but that he might be preparing some sort of a concurrence on other grounds, but mm -hmm. that they had the five conservatives ready to vote to strike down Roe versus Wade. That we, we don't know, but that was the reporting. Right, right. And so there is a question. So six conservatives seeming to favor some sort of overturning of Roe, or in Robert's case, something more limited, and the liberals objecting, wanting to uphold Roe. The details, I mean, this I, it had to be a law clerk. It had to be, right? Unle unless you believe a U.S. Supreme Court justice, him or herself, would have leaked this thing. Right, which I don't believe. I suspect it was a law clerk. And so the sort of table bingo last night was, well, would it have been one from one of the conservative justices trying to shore up a wobbly moderate, you know, keep the pressure on to stay on the majority? Or would it have been, in your opinion, and I realize this is speculation, a, a liberal jurist's law clerk trying to generate enough public backlash that the wobbler would go over to the lefty side. The second scenario is the only thing that makes sense to me. Why? Because I don't think a conservative clerk would have put this out on with the, with the idea that this would somehow shore up a wobbly judge. This is going to be a controversial decision if mm -hmm. it came out. Mm -hmm. So better to keep it quiet, mm -hmm. shore the person up internally, mm -hmm. and then let the chips fall their way when it's or it would fall where they may when it's too late to reverse it. Right. Your your position. Right. So what about this Marshall investigation? I mean, I I'm having covered the high court for a few years. I can I can say. The the Supreme Court marshal investigating you isn't the sentence that strikes fear in the hearts of men and women. <laughs> now, the FBI, because CBS is reporting that there may be an FBI investigation into who leaked this. That's a different story. and That's more your purview. So what do you think happens from here? Who actually will take the helm? Well, you know, I think that the chief would have had the option and perhaps he still will to appoint a counsel. Uh, a special counsel, not in the classical criminal sense, but the court can appoint a counsel and he could bring in a former U.S. attorney or someone with a criminal law background. Uh, and uh, I'm sure he would get the support he needed from the FBI or, or any other law enforcement agency. What's your confidence that they can get to the bottom of who leaked it? I think they may need a grand jury to do that, which would mean a criminal case. Wow. Why? To compel the truth. Yeah, because people will <laughs> lie to the marshal <laughs> and maybe well, not to a prosecutor. Perhaps. Well, that's the thing. And and people are talking about it online, though. Is this a crime? Uh, to me, I mean, it's clearly unethical. And if it was a lawyer, they should be disbarred immediately. R right. But what crime could this possibly be? Well, it could be obstructing the, the administration of justice, the due process of justice. Mm -hmm. That's a stretch, though, no? Well, no, it, it's not. A, it, uh, it, it, you're... Obstruction means you're, you're attempting to influence, you know, through some kind of wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't, I don't think it's a stretch. Mm. So do you think they should? Do you think, I mean, like if you were running the DOJ right now, well, it, would you be pushing for it? I'd want to go back and parse the statute and make sure it was, you know, clearly covered by it. But if it was, I, I think that's the way to go. What do you make, as you've been in and out of government many times in your career, as your book makes clear, uh, what do you make that this was leaked to the national security reporter at Politico? It's not the high court, you know, the reporter. I don't know what to make of that. Uh, obviously, whoever was leaking it is trying to cover their tracks, and maybe there was something about that channel that made them feel more secure. I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know either. I wish I, I wish I had the tea leaves better, but I really feel there's a guy named Phil Houston. He used to run the CIA's, maybe he was there when you were there, uh, Deception Detection Program. He came mm-hmm. up with it and then ran it for 25 years. That's what they need. <laughs> they need Phil Houston, who's literally a human lie detector, to come out there. He wrote a book called Spy the Lie, mm-hmm. and he will get to the bottom of it, even right. if there's not criminal uh, prosecution power. Right. I think they should spare no effort to get to the bottom of what happened. Why? I mean, explain for the audience why it's so catastrophic what this person has done. Well, this this uh, because uh, once you expose the court to, to this kind of popular pressure and sort of uh, potential mob psychology, it, it'll it'll uh, divert them from doing from reaching a principal decision based on the merits. We go to a lot of trouble in our system to insulate the court. Uh, so that they can uh, do what they think is just under the law. And, uh, you know, this this means that we're going to have sort of this uh, street justice played out in front mm-hmm. of the Supreme Court when, when they're considering controversial cases. Can we talk about the difference? Because one of my reporter friends texted me last night. She could see I was mad on Twitter about the leak. And she said, I'm curious as a reporter why you'd be against this. You know, are your journalism, you know, credentials – weighing against your legal credentials. And I said, to steal a, a phrase, America first, you know? That- right. I mean, I, I, would, I, I hope that there's still reporters who would, who would not like if a national security secret that exposed us to danger uh, was leaked. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they, they might take advantage of it, but they would still, I think, uh, feel that that was wrong. And because society as a whole was injured by it. And the same is true here. This hurts us in a different kind of way, but it's very profound. Well, and even without, I mean, like you take somebody like Snowden, he's, he's got reasons. You can disagree with his reasons, but he had reasons for what he did. You know, mm-hmm. he thought that the government was doing something unethical, illegal, and it needed to be exposed. That's not even arguably the case here. There's no even alleged wrongdoing by anybody. This isn't a whistleblower. This is somebody who clearly leaked a confidential document that they took a, an oath not to leak, uh, through their you know, attorney bar certification. And when you go to work at the Supreme Court, you get the lecture from the chief justice. Uh, and they did it for political reasons. So I don't like the public interest in in disclosing this now in advance is not the same as with something like right. a, the Pentagon Papers. Well, I think it seems to I mean, we're all speculating, but uh, I think the most likely scenario is they leaked it for the purpose of politicizing the decision-making process, of bringing extraneous pressure to bear on on a justice or some justices. Mm. It's shocking. Right. I mean, I was saying, we, we've never seen, have you ever, I'm sure, let's say it was a liberal jurist, or uh, not jurist, but law clerk. You don't think somebody want, you know might have considered trying to turn the tide some way on Lawrence v. Texas, on on Griswold versus Connecticut, on mm-hmm. Obergefell, the gay marriage case, all mm-hmm. these cases that sort sure. of are in line with privacy rights and so on, deriving from Roe. Sure, they would have. I mean, on Roe itself, you know, who right. knows how the the law clerks working for the other justices felt? Probably not so happy. Right. Right. But absolutely, they never did this. This is right. a breach beyond. It's about somebody making it about themselves and their own views. Absolutely. You know, one of the points I've made about January 6th is uh, that whether or not the president incited it or was aware of it be violence, the thing I objected to was sicking a political demonstration, including some rowdy people who looked like they were ready for some violence, and putting them outside the Capitol to put pressure on the Senate and the president of the Senate, the vice president. Uh, to, to, to reach a certain decision. And while people are free to do that, for one branch of government to try to influence another by using that extraneous method mm-hmm. was wrong. Mm-hmm. No violence is involved here, but they're doing violence to the process and they are trying to rally political forces to put pressure on the court. And for the same basic reason, it's wrong. Black Rifle Coffee Company is a veteran-founded company serving premium coffee to people who love America. They develop their explosive roast profiles with the same mission focus learned as military members serving this great country of ours. And in 2021, Black Rifle donated over 100,000 bags of coffee, that's 2.1 million cups of coffee, to first responders, law enforcement, and active duty military members. So you know that with every purchase you make, Black Rifle will give back. 
Black Rifle Coffee imports high-quality coffee beans from Colombia and Brazil, and they roast them five days a week at their facilities in Manchester, Tennessee, and Salt Lake City, Utah, which means you get the freshest coffee possible no matter where you live. The best way to enjoy Black Rifle's freedom-filled coffee is with the Black Rifle Coffee Club. When you join the club, your brew of choice is roasted, packaged, and shipped free to your door and your schedule. You can buy it at BlackRifleCoffee.com, use the code MK at checkout for 20% off your purchase, and your first coffee club order. BlackRifleCoffee.com slash MK, use that code MK at checkout. Black Rifle Coffee is America's coffee. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.